Hello, well, that tuning in today's first video, doing JMA Friday for today's first video. We're going to have a look at the weather next month with the Japanese and CFS V2 uh, models. After this video has been released this afternoon, we will have a look at uh, weather next week's 10 days with the uh, GFS e and all of that kind of thing. But we're going to get the long range look ahead uh, done for you uh, first of all. I should say month ahead look ahead. Uh, done for you first of all. Um, so uh, the storyline at the moment is that we're probably in for a cold snap next week. And then some of the models are flirted with the idea of a very cold spell of weather setting up through the early part of February. Sort of the first week to 10 days of February. Whether this comes to anything, we will cover this more uh, in today's second video, but it is relevant to uh, this video, of course, because it's covering the same time frame. So whether this comes to anything will be very interesting to see, and we will see whether the um, JMA and CFS V2 models have uh, got this very cold potential through early February in their sights uh, right now. So I'll begin by having a look at the uh, JMA. This is the 500 millibar height anomaly flow chart from the uh, Japanese Meteorological Agency from the pole uh, view down. So uh, this is the North Pole of the Northern Hemisphere just here. Then the middle latitudes of the Northern Hemisphere are around there. Uh, these broke down to week periods. The first week period will take us from today, the 26th of uh, January, through to the 2nd of February. Remember, blue is extrapolating to low pressure and red, orange, and yellow to high pressure. So what we see is that uh, for the coming week, we've got this ridge here through the Atlantic and into the UK as well, and it extends to our east also. Pushing the jet stream north, so this is quite a mild and dry scenario to start us off. You expect a little bit of spring-like weather to be coming through uh, with this, and uh, temperatures should be above average, but it should be uh, really quite dry as well. Then we go through to uh, week two, which takes us from the 2nd through to the 9th of uh, February. This one shows a bit of a change. So we've still got above average heights uh, out to our west, but they are shifting northwards. So they're becoming centred more to the north-northwest of the British Isles, with below average heights down to the south. It uh, means that the jet stream is uh, probably doing something rather like that. It's quite a complicated pattern. But uh, the upshot is that we're probably uh, pulling in some really quite cold air, particularly in the southern part of the country, uh, putting in some quite cold air potentially from the east uh, with that one. So I think the JMA is showing the potential for not necessarily very cold weather, but it is certainly showing the potential for significantly colder weather through that early part of February, the first week of February. And then we go through to weeks three and four, which takes us from the 9th through to the 23rd of February. And uh, very similar ideas, really. Still the above average heights in the Atlantic, albeit a little bit weaker. The centre of the above average heights, however, is over Scandinavia. So let's get rid of those H's and put this one here. Because this is where the centre of the above average heights is. It's over Scandinavia. So essentially what's going on here is the Atlantic ridge is ridging into this area of high pressure that's up over Scandinavia. And so this, particularly for southern parts of the country could again be placing us in an easterly uh, flow. So I do think the JMA is signaling the chance some quite cold weather here through the uh, early and middle part of February. This is something that was showing up on last week's JMA Friday. The CFS didn't agree on it, uh, but the JMA was the colder of the two models, and I think that uh, kind of thing is what the JMA is going for again with this week's update. So let's have a look at the uh, tropical and mid-latitude view in terms of temperature and precipitation uh, anomalies. So we're coming back to week one again. Week one takes us from the 26th of uh, January through to 2nd of February. British Isles is up in the top right-hand corner of the chart as you are looking at. A reminder of that week one 500 bit of our height anomaly with the above average heights through the UK and extending in that direction as well. It means that the jet stream is pushed northwards uh, going up there. So on the mild side of the jet, the close to that ridge, you'll expect quite a dry and uh, mild week. Actually, the precipitation anomaly does show some influence still 
from the jet stream. So across Scotland, it is still a little bit, particularly in the northern part of Scotland, still a little bit uh, above average with the precipitation. But most parts of the country are coming out uh, with a drier than average week in the week ahead. And temperature anomalies look like that, nice and mild, above average temperatures, quite substantially so, around 1 to 2 degrees above average. Many parts of Europe also coming out with a very mild week in the week ahead. Do we see anything colder for uh, week two? Remember what's happening in week two, which is the 2nd to the 9th of February, is that we get this area of above average heights uh, building to our northwest. It's going further north, and we thought that should be, particularly for the southern part of the country, opening the door to the chance of easterly or northeasterly type influences. Let's have a look at the precipitation anomaly first of all. So, <coughs> excuse me, it's going drier than average. We're going uh, drier than average with precipitation anomalies across all parts of the country. Uh, which you'd expect because we're blocking off the Atlantic, so we're not allowing in the areas of low pressure and the rain bearing weather systems. But what about the temperatures? Well, this is how they're looking, and it does appear that we are going colder than average here through this first week of February, particularly focusing on England and Wales, where we're going down to, I think, going down to around 1 to 2 degrees below average, that sort of uh, level. So that's quite a significantly cold, um, cold week there that the uh, JMA is going for during the uh, first week of February. Notice Scotland isn't as cold as that, uh, so not as much of an easterly influence for Scotland. It looks like it's England and Wales that are pulling in that cold air off the continent. Many parts of Europe also going colder than average through that first week of February. And then that takes us to weeks three and four, where we've got the ridge again to our northwest, but also, and particularly and crucially, can't see Scandinavia, but it's centering over here, which should leave us still at the um, risk of bringing in those easterly winds. So the two weeks from the 9th to the 23rd of February are again coming out drier than average. It looks like we're in for quite a dry uh, time of it, if the uh, JMA is right through February but also coming out colder than average again. So uh, we've got three weeks, particularly focusing on England and Wales, three weeks of colder than average temperature anomalies here. Less so for Scotland, but for England and Wales, this could be a really cold uh, spell that's setting up here, quite a prolonged cold spell. Uh, but setting up here through this first half February. Do bear in mind, this is a two-weekly anomaly, the night of the 23rd, it's week three and four, so it could be transition. It might be that week three is very cold and week four is milder, and averaging it all out, we do still come out a bit cold and average. So you always, always have to bear that in mind with a two-weekly anomaly. But overall, particularly focusing on England and Wales, and probably Ireland too, this is looking like quite an extended spell of cold weather through the early part of February, or first half of February, let's say, uh, with the JMA. And it is in line with what the model was showing uh, last week as well. So uh, a little bit of consistency here with the JMA for quite a cold first half to uh, February. Obviously, there will be some wintry potential in there as well. Although it is drier than average, as it will always be when, it, or nearly always, it will be drier than average when it's colder than average because cold air holds less moisture than warm air. Um, despite that, there would be, as we go along, snow uh, risks coming and going. And, of course, you'd have to look at the shorter range uh, models like the GFS and the ECM to be able to pick up the detail of those disturbances that uh, could bring snow. So, anyway, that's the JMA. What about the CFS uh, V2? These, again, by the triple of our heights broken down into weekly periods. The first weekly period is taking us from the 26th of January through to the 1st of uh, February. Same idea idea is with JMA, red, uh, orange, yellow, extrapolates to high pressure and green to low pressure. So we find that we've got this area of above average heights across much of Europe and extending to our south and southwest during week one with um, below average heights up to the north. And it means that again, we're bringing the flow and the jet stream through like that. Looks rather flat. It should be mild during that uh, final week of January. So both models are in agreement that we start off at a relatively dry, but also uh, relatively mild uh, scenario. 
Week two is the important one. This is the week where the um, JMA was going much colder. The CFS is looking like this, uh, taking us from the 2nd through to the 8th of February. Uh, and this isn't looking anywhere near as cold, I have to say. So we've got this above average area of heights to our west, extending into the UK, but also extending into Central Europe as well. Below average heights uh, up to the north. But notice no ridge being centred over Scandinavia. So this just keeps us on the mild side of the jet stream, with the jet going through uh, like that. It would just be very dry, I would have thought, but also quite mild as well. Obviously, with a ridge close country, you would expect night frost. But we aren't pulling down that easterly or northeasterly air that we see with the JMA. So the divergence between the JMA and the CFS that we had last week, where the JMA was significantly colder for the early part of February, and the CFS was significantly milder for the early part of February. That divergence continues again for uh, this update of JMA Friday. What about week uh, three? This takes us through to the 9th through to the 15th of February. The above average heights are pulling out into mid-Atlantic then. So we've got a, a mid-Atlantic ridge, essentially. The jet stream is probably doing something rather like that. So I think we are hinting at a bit of a dip in the jet stream within the 500 millibar flow. This would be cooler because we'd be starting to pull the air down from the northwest. But again, this is not the scenario that the JMA is going for. This is not the very cold air that we could bring in from the east and the northeast. It is cooler. There might be wintry showers there, particularly for the north, but it's cooler with a polar maritime type airstream rather than anything notably cold happening from the north and from the northeast as well. And then week uh, four looks like that. Takes us from the 16th the 22nd of February, with that area of above average heights just building through the Atlantic into Europe. Again, the jet stream's going up here, so we're on the mild side of the jet. Just a lot of quiet, dry weather. Both models are in agreement for a notably dry February, actually. They're just differing on how they're doing it, and that's the important fact, because that um, heralds the uh, difference in temperatures. So this is mild and dry, whereas the JMA is cold, potentially very cold and uh, dry. Let's have a look at the uh, temperature anomalies then. So week one is coming out with above average uh, temperatures. The final week of January, 22nd of January through to 1st of February. Milder than average for the UK. Milder than average for the whole of uh, Europe as well. And both models are in agreement with that. So they are in agreement that we start off in a mild place for this uh, final week of January. But then this is where the difference comes in. This is week two, which takes us from the 2nd to the 8th of February. It's significantly milder than average for the UK. It's very, very mild across all parts of Europe as well. That is really at odds with what the JMA is showing, where it wants not only the UK, and particularly England and Wales, it wants uh, most of continental Europe to be cold in that first week of February. CFS says, no, we're going to stay on the mild side of the jet stream and we're going to keep those temperature anomalies above average. And then we go through to uh, week three. Now, this is when we had a little bit of a change because we're bringing in more of a polar maritime influence. So the temperature anomaly for the UK does drop. It returns to average. Remember, that's happening due to a northwesterly. It's not happening happening because of a northerly or an easterly or a northeast. It's not a very cold airstream that's coming in, but it is cooler. A little bit of wintry potential possibly uh, through that week. Most parts of Europe, again, coming out significantly milder than average from the 9th to the 15th of February. And then we go through to week four and the temperature anomaly is starting to increase again. So going quite significantly above average from the 16th to the 22nd of February. Most parts of Europe coming out milder than average as well. The CFS is not seeing at all this chance of very cold east or north easterly uh, winds. And then finally, we go through to precipitation. So week one, precipitation, the coming week from the 22nd of January through to 1st of February, a little bit above average with the precipitation in the week ahead. Then week two, which is the same to the 8th of February, goes drier than average. Uh, remember, that's happening because of the ridge to our west rather than 
been to our northeast. Uh, week three also coming out drier than average, the 9th to 15th of February drier than average week. And then week four rounds it all off, the 16th to the 22nd of February comes out. It's a little bit more unsettled. It comes out closer to average. So obviously we are starting to turn slightly more unsettled there. But overall, the signals for February are very dry. Uh, signals uh, from both of these models. They are just differing uh, greatly by how they're doing it and also by the temperatures. So there we have it. We've got the JMA, which is going for a dry and cold, potentially for England and Wales, very cold uh, February, particularly the first half of February. The CFS, it is still dry, but it's going for a much milder situation uh, through the first half of February. Which one of these two models is going to be correct with this prediction? It's going to be really fascinating to see how this plays out through the early part of February. We know from the shorter range output, and I'll um, pick up on this in today's second video, which will be with you this afternoon, we know from the shorter range output that there is potential for it to turn very cold through the early part of February. GFS particularly is hinting at that, but also there are hints within other models as well. Um, so we know that potential is there, but JMA is seeing that potential as well. The CFS says, no, it's not going to happen, but the CFS could be wrong. Conversely, the CFS could be right and these other models could be wrong. So as ever with the UK uh, and cold conditions, it's on a knife edge. You pay your money, you take your choice. We're just going to have to wait and see how it plays out. But I will have more for you on this in today's second video, which will be coming up this afternoon. That's all for now. Come back this afternoon for today's second video. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.